Okay. Uh, Clarence and Anita. Oh, wait, we have another viewer. Let's see. Scott, do you have it set where anybody that calls in, as soon as they get on the line, they can talk? Yes. Okay. Um, who is viewer seven? Can everybody take a moment and just say their name that's in the conference? Hi. Clarence Holmes. Anita. All right, so Scott, whoever viewer seven is, they might not be able to hear us. They might not have their uh, dialed in correctly. I'll type a message. Well, I'm going to get started because we're supposed to start at 6. Oh, viewer 7 said yes. Maybe they can hear us, but they can't talk, Scott. Maybe you don't have their audio set up. Well, they might have muted themselves. Oh, okay. Hey, Sandra Griffin, the mic present. Okay. Can you hear me, Dan? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Clarence, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you um, fine. It's just a little low, but I can make out. I'm in a quiet room, so it's okay. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to get started. Uh, there might be other people that join. I don't know. Sure. What's going to happen? But, Scott, you're recording this, right? Yes. I have a question before we get started, guys. Is Go there ahead. supposed to be a visual with this conference? Yeah. Or is it all just all? Yeah. No, the... You're going to look at my... Can you see my computer screen? No, hold on. No, no I don't. Let me let me, let me me log out, and um, I think I'm going to log back in. Because there's like two ways you can log in. Let me try it. All right. It says no content is being shared. Can you see my computer screen? No. No. Do you have it off screen, Dan? Okay, I can see it now. Okay, so that was my fault. It's uh, this is weird. All right, so I think I lost Ed. No, I'm here. Ed's here? All right, so Ed can hear. And is Clarence still here? I guess he left. Says he's in here still. All right, sorry. Every time we log into this thing, we have little technical difficulties. All right, so is that, uh, Ed is it here and okay. Clarence, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Um, initially, I logged in via the internet to the iPhone, and it, is, it does not give me a visual, so I logged out, logged back in, 
as a phone call conference, and it's not giving me anything there. So should I be on the computer with this? Because I'm actually using the Join Me app on my phone because I'm, I'm actually remote right now. Can you see my screen now? No. Anita, can you see my screen? Yes. Scott, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. All um, right, so Clarence, Clarence, I don't know. You're supposed to be able to see the screen. I think, do you have the latest? You, is everyone is everyone at a computer? I'm no, using I'm my a... iPad. Okay. And you're on an iPhone, Clarence? Yes, I'm on an iPhone. You guys can go ahead. I'll get caught up. I'm going to download it on my iPad, and then I'll log in through the iPad and see if that makes a difference. Okay? Okay. Because I don't want to hold the meeting up. You know what I mean? So I'll catch up. All right. So All right. Uh, Anita, Scott, and Ed, we're going to get started. So uh, the the training tonight is on the home inspection process and the reply to inspection. Um, the training is was scheduled to be for our mentor program. Scott, this is being recorded, right? I know I keep asking that. Yes. All right. So the training was originally for our mentor program, and we wanted to take new agents through the home inspection process and take them through the process on how to navigate getting a buyer through the inspection process and the negotiation for the inspection. So what we did was... We took a listing that I have, and when the listing was ready to be listed on the MLS, we hired a home inspector, and we did an inspection on the property. And we we all met at the property and walked through with the inspector, and he did his inspection routine, and we discussed what an agent should be doing or should not be doing in terms of being at the inspection and walking through with the um with the buyers. There was a little bit of a difference of opinion on whether the agent should be at the whole wait there the whole time for the inspection, should they attend the inspection. You guys can come up to your own conclusions on that. My experience is I like to go to the inspection for a portion of it. And I like to have a brief conversation with the home inspector and I like to walk the house walk through the house again with the buyer and I want to get a feel for are there any major concerns in the property. Um and then I typically leave and let the home inspector finish the inspection with the buyer and let them have a private time together to discuss whatever they want about the house. Um so we did this home inspection a couple of weeks ago, and then the day after we did the inspection, he emailed me the report. So what I wanted to be able to do was share with the agents in our office what, how you should handle the, this part of the process. So prior to doing the inspection, you should be having a conversation with the buyer explaining to them what the process is and setting their expectations. If you do not have a conversation with them, you're going to leave it up to them to determine what they should and shouldn't expect. And you're also going to totally lose control of the situation. So a lot of times what typically happens is you may have a buyer whose mom or dad or aunt or uncle happens to be an expert in real estate or wants to be an expert in real estate, and they might be telling them some information, and you might run into a bad home inspector. You, you know, There's a number of variables that could come in to play that could create a problem for you inside of the transaction. So I always have a conversation with the buyer prior to doing the inspection to set their expectations. So what I really want to accomplish is I don't want them to get freaked out if there's a leaking faucet or if there's a, some hole in the wall or if there's something, you know, I want to explain to them that they're buying a home that's older, it's 50 or 60 or 70 or 30 or 40 years old, 
and they need to be prepared that there's going to be the inspector's going to find things wrong with the house. And when they do, those items are negotiable to get fixed or to get a credit for repairs. We, when we say negotiable, that doesn't mean the seller is automatically agreeing to do any of those repairs. That's just saying that it's possible to negotiate. So when I'm explaining the home inspection process to a buyer, I'm going back to the home inspection clause and I'm saying within the time allowed that we negotiated in the contract, you have three options. One is you can accept the property the way it is and move on. The second option is you can terminate the contract and just say you don't want the house and you don't need to give a reason. And the third option is you can negotiate for either negotiate for repairs or you can negotiate for a credit. A lot of times, typically, if I'm negotiating for repairs, if it's something that's extensive, I may feel more comfortable with the buyer getting their own repairs done. Because if we're asking a seller to complete repairs, that's a, like a complicated situation, the seller is going to basically find the cheapest way out of it. And that might not be the best way for your seller, I mean for your buyer. So depending on the situation, you may ask for a repair to be done or you may ask for a credit. A lot of times you could ask me to help you. If you get to this point in a, in a, in a inspection or into a transaction and you don't know what to do, call me and we could talk about it. Or let the buyer decide. Present, instead of negotiating you know, as the buyer, negotiate for the buyer. I always say to people, just be the messenger. Deliver the information. Let the buyer see what the facts are and let the buyer make their own decision. You want to present them with what their choices are. So remember, going back to that first thing, choice number one, you can accept the property. Choice number two, you can terminate the contract. And choice number three is you can negotiate. So here's what happened in this situation. We put this house on the market, and then look at what I did. I got that inspection report. Here's the listing. I put the listing on here. I mean, I put the home inspection on here. So as an agent, and I put in the agent notes, look at this. Seller paid for a home inspection for buyers to review. It is listed in the document section where you find the seller's disclosure. So now an agent sees this. The inspection report is listed on the listing. They could share this with the buyer if they want. Can you all hear me okay? Hello? Oh, did I lose everybody? Uh, I don't know hey, Dan, happened. I put it in mute because we were getting a lot of feedback. Okay. And I'll, I'll just right. un I'll unmute it when you want people to talk. No, that's cool. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, so, and I see more people join. I don't know about viewer nine. All right. So I hope everybody can hear me, though, Scott. So if, somebody can't, if you can't hear me, you have to send me a message in the chat box at the bottom, and I'll, I'll grab it and see it. Um, okay, so in the multiple listing on trend, this is what I put in here. Right, and the position that the that the seller was making is, first of all, we paid for this as a service to the seller, but we mainly did it as a training for the office. We don't typically do this, but it, it is a tool that you can use where if you had a seller that was concerned about how the inspection's going to go, they can prepay for a home inspection prior to listing the property, and then they can put that home inspection on trend. This seller basically said, look, all the things in this report that are listed in this report, I want a potential buyer to know these are where, this is what the problems are. And he took the position of, look, if they do an inspection and they find anything other than the problems listed in this report, 
we'll deal with them. But they wanted to sell the house as is in the condition that it's in with all the information stated in this report, basically. So, as it turns out, we had 20 showings in about five days on this listing because it was a good listing in a good neighborhood. We priced it right, and we did it. We did a really good job marketing the property. The guy that made an offer on the property made an offer on the property knowing that this was the home inspection report and saying to us that as long as they agreed with us, as long as the buyer did the buyer, if they did their own inspection, as long as they didn't find anything else other than what was listed in here, they would move forward. The buyer in this situation did do their own inspection, and they agreed to move forward. They didn't ask for any repairs. They negotiated a sale price based on the information on the listing and the information stated in this report. So I wanted you to see, all of you to see that, too. All right, so now, um, the same way that you explain you want to prepare the home inspector, I mean, you want to prepare the buyer for the home inspection and how that process works, you're almost hoping that the other agent, the listing agent, did the same thing with the seller and that they explained how the home inspection process works and what the seller can expect. And when I'm dealing with the seller, I say to them the same thing. Uh, you know, I wanted to find this. Uh, hold on a second. Let me see. I wanted to show... So I pretty much always go back to what did we agree to in writing? That's a general theme that I like to always keep in front of people. So when I'm when I'm negotiating a deal, I mean negotiating a listing... I like to just focus in on what we're agreeing to. So if a buyer is going to, I mean, if a seller is going to sell their property, they're going to enter into this thing. Everybody knows what this is, right? Standard agreement of sale. So here we go, right here. I, I, A lot of times I just bring this and I show a seller this information. And here it is right here. Look, one, two, three. What did I talk to you guys about? The buyer has three choices. So I say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we're going to put the property up on the market. We're going to do a really good job marketing the property. We're going to get as many people as we can through the house. Hopefully somebody makes an offer. When they do, they're going to use this form. When they use this form, they're going to select that they want to do an inspection. When they do an inspection, they're going to have three choices. Accept, terminate, or, or negotiate. And here's, the, here's where those things are. And everybody should be reading this content, and they should be familiar with it so that you know that. And then you can properly explain this to a buyer or a seller. When you're representing a buyer and you're doing a home inspection, you're hoping that the other agent has explained all of this to the seller. Now, did they? I don't know. And are the agents, probably 75% or 80% of the agents may not be doing this because they may not know to do it. They might just not be in the practice of doing it, whatever. But you still got to represent the best interest of your buyer if you're representing the buyer. And the buyer needs to know this information too. When they sign the agreement of sale, they can accept the property, terminate the agreement, or they can negotiate. So in this situation, if we were representing the buyer, the buyer's inspector would have given us this report. So I want you to be, so number one, the number one thing you want to do is, I want to show you this. Um, let me move this over. All right. We want to do a good job. So... There's a, this is a 14-page report. So when the inspector emails this to you, what should you do? I know you all just said read it. Correct. You should read the report. Just read the whole thing. What can it hurt you to take 
the time that it, it takes to read this. So I would read the whole report to familiarize myself with it, and then I would also have been at the home inspection and have been made aware of what the issues are. So I like this home inspector. I like his format for the report because it's easy to read and understand, and it's easy to discuss with, an, with a buyer and potentially with a seller. So if we go to look at this, this is what we want to focus in on. And a lot of times when I get a home inspection report, I just email it to the seller's agent. Just say, here's the home inspection report. We're we're going to, you know, be this, me and the buyer are going to be meeting to discuss this. And I'll be in touch with you soon. Or I send it to them with the reply. So in this situation, he gives me this summary. And the summary has some safety issues. So let's just go through this as if I'm going to take you all through this as if you were my buyer and we were negotiating. So there's some safety issues. There's no safety cables noted through the garage door springs. Now, it would be nice to, if you all knew what the safety cable was. It would be nice if I knew what it was, too, because what if I don't know what it is, and now I'm talking to the buyer, and I say, I don't even know what that is. That's not good. So we want to know what the safety cables are. So if you don't know what the safety cables are, what do you do? Well, you can call me. You can call Dan, your broker, and I should be able to help you. Or you could also check this out. Look at all this information right here. You could just either call this guy, email him, fax him, send him a message. Hi, Phil. This is Dan. You did an inspection for me on Bowler Street. What are safety cables throughout the garage? And then he'll answer you. All right? Anyway, safety cables is pr a pretty simple thing to get um, fixed and... Um, you know, again, that, that could be something that you either negotiate for or you let go. Now, I also might say this. Let's see. Here you go. Right here, garage. No safety cables were noted through the garage door springs. The installation of spring cables would improve safety during operation. So the garage door, and I was there, the garage door worked fine. There was no issues with, you know, working. This is just a safety concern, and it would be, you know, he's saying that it's it's a safety issue. An appraiser, FHA, they're not even going to notice any of that. All right. The openings in the porch railing are large enough to allow a child to fall through. So, again, you might say, you know, this might be a nitpicking thing from a home inspector, but it might also be easier, easy to fix, except that that porch railing is metal or uh, iron. So it might not be that easy to fix. And, you know, again, we're explaining all of this to a buyer. So, you know, in talking to them, you might want to go through each item and say to them, um, you may want to say to them, some of these items might be simple for you to deal with on your own, and some of them might be more important to deal with this, with getting the seller to deal with them. Um, if you, and again, you're doing your, you should have done your preparation with the buyer, letting them know, you know, that the house is older, a lot of things might not be perfect. They need to anticipate having to deal with some issues. And then any major issues, they may be willing, you know, get negotiated. The lower back portion of the back patio between the steps and the building presents a trip hazard, cracks with displacement. So this is it right here. See this picture right here? Again, 
that might not be, you know, that big of a deal. And you can look at it here, and hopefully you were at the house and you saw it. But this block of concrete needs to be replaced, basically. And it's probably like a 5x5 five five block of concrete, which is 25 square feet. And the real cost for something like that is $8 to $10 a square foot. But, you know, to get a to get a contractor to come out, they might not want to do it for that because it's such a small job. But anyway, you know, this is not that expensive of a repair. And how do I know that stuff? Because I've been involved in a thousand home inspections. So you might not know, and you might be uncertain. So what you could do is email me the report. Let me read it. Talk to me about it. Let's you and I have a discussion before you talk to your buyer about it. But that's not a big deal either, and it's only a safety issue. The open, openings in the stairway railing to porch, so he did this twice. He killed me on two things. It's not really a big deal, and this, the buyer should be able to handle that. All right, let's go to the repair items. Repairs to the sloped roof are needed, organic growth. Repairs to the flat roof are needed, and that's outlined in the report. The venting panel to the skylight could not be inspected for proper functioning. Control chain and wheel were tied down with roping. When we were in the bathroom, we couldn't access the skylight, and so we couldn't open it. And then there was chipping paint in the skylight, and he recommended painting it. What we also did in Trend is this seller did this. Hold on. Look at what he did. Seller knew there was a problem with the roof, and he got a roof. He got the roof repaired, and it's a one-year warranty. And that was in the MLS listing, so they could see that. So he did address one of these issues in the home inspection report. Um, look at this exterior: tree branches should be trimmed away from the house to avoid damage to the building. Circuits which, again, that might be something that the buyer could do on their own. Electrical. Circuits within the main distribution panel are doubled up or referred to as double taps. You guys might, some of you may know what a double tap is, some of you may not, but basically it's a very common situation in all these older homes where the electrical work was done 20, 30, 40 years ago. They took a circuit and they they ran a couple wires into the same, they, they ran a couple of, devices like outlets or lights into the same device and they really should the same circuit same circuit breaker inside the panel it's pretty easy to fix and an electrician would probably tell you even if you had to get a new circuit breaker added they might tell you it's 50 to 100 bucks cable clamps all right i don't even know what this is or it's so, oh, I do know what it is. It's very simple. There's where the wire goes into the circuit breaker panel. Let me see if he has a picture of it here. He don't, I, I don't see where he has it. But anyway, where, where the wires come into the panel, there's a little hole. And that hole needs to be filled with a something to secure the wire and holding it in place so that you couldn't stick your finger in the side of the hole, basically, as a, as a precaution. So, again, whoever the guy is that would do this, uh, the double tap, they could do this thing. Those little uh, grommets are 15 cents, and it's very simple to put in. All right, multiple ground and neutral wiring within the main distribution panel are not to be terminated at the same connection point. The outside exterior outlet is damaged. The light fan in front bedroom was not operational. So you guys heard what I just said there. Those items are kind of self-explanatory and might be easy to do or for the seller to do, or for us to get an estimate. They're all minor things that can be repaired. All right, now, 
this next thing was a little bit of a weird situation. The boiler wasn't working because the thermostat wasn't working. So since then, we got the heater working. There was a missing wire. The wire was cut in the thermostat. So the, the, the heater works fine. Look at the next item, which we told them, go, we told the buyer, go ahead and turn on the heater. It works fine. And they did, and it did work fine. The boiler pressure relief valve, discharge valve, was not installed, which is a simple PVC pipe that comes out of the heater that goes down to the floor. It's, that's a $5 part, and it won't cost that much money to get fixed. Check that out. I'm still getting showings on Bowler Street. All right. Have all radiators checked lead and further evaluated. He just wrote that because he couldn't turn on the heating system, but everything is okay with that. Uh, now, I'm telling you that because I know that. But in this situation, what we could do is ask them to provide us with a certification from a, a licensed plumber that the heating system is okay. Basement exhaust fan was operational time of inspection but required adjustment for quiet operation. What he's saying, it was too loud. A drip leg is required for a gas appliance on the water heater. I don't know if he has a picture of it. It's he, he calls for this on every deal, on every transaction. It's really not that big of an item. Do you guys see where the child could fall through the railing? That's a sofa that was on the railing that they were throwing out. But I guess right there, a kid could fall through. That's what he was saying was a problem. And look, right here, saying that was a problem too. All right. So anyway, um, on the on the... The last item, let me just read that. I, I don't have a picture of it, but there's a gas line that goes to a heating system, and the drip leg is something that's connected to the bottom of the gas line, which is something very simple to do, and I don't even, I don't really completely understand the purpose of it. You can ask the home inspector, though. Uh, and if you want, you could say, we want that installed. And then it says the window should be trimmed, adjusted, and hardware should be improved as necessary. There was a problem with the windows in this house. Some of them wouldn't shut all, all the way. Some of the seals were broken, so there was moisture building up between the windows. Anyway, that's the end of my summary. Then he goes into each section in his report, which you can read. But at this point, we have a summary. So a lot of times what I do is I tell the, I tell the buyer, Look, take your time, read the report, go over the summary, let me know what you think. Is there any items that you're totally worried about? Is there, you know, what should... Now, the problem that we run into is buyer might say, Dan, what would you do? Or what should I do? Or tell, tell me what to do. What do you think? And you want to represent their best interest, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're not killing the, the transaction because ultimately they want to buy the house. So, and I, I have a saying that uh, I always say, or who is in control of the transaction? Who is in control? The person that's in control is the one that is asking all the questions. So when the buyer asks you a question, Dan, what would you do? Your job is not necessarily to tell them what you would do. Your job is to ask them a question. Because when they asked you a question, they took control of the situation. So you need to regain control by asking more questions. So what would be a good question at that point? They say to me, Dan, what would you do? Should I, what, you know, I'm looking at the report. Tell me, what do you think I should do? So what I'm going to do is say this. Well, Mr. Buyer, what if, we asked the seller to make all these repairs, and they told us to go pound sand and that they weren't going to do any repairs. My question to you is, do you still want to buy the house? That is a great question to ask because now you're going to get a feel for does this, what, what, is real, what is the buyer really thinking? Not that you want them to buy the house without the seller doing anything. You just want to get them, you know, flush it out a little bit. And let's, again, 
keep control of this conversation and the transaction. What if they say, no way? I'm, I wouldn't. Well, why, what, what items are in here? Now we lead to more questions. They say, no way. Okay, well, what items are in here that would prevent you from wanting to move forward? And then the buyer says, well, the heating system wasn't working. Okay, what if we took care of the heating system? Are there any other issues on there? Again, see how I'm asking the questions. I'm in control of the situation. We're talking back and forth, but you want to represent their interests, but you also want to make sure that, you know, sometimes a buyer doesn't know what's good for them. They take a situation like this. They really want the house, but at the same time, they want to be Donald Trump. They're looking at a real estate deal. This is the one real estate deal that they're going to look at in the next five to ten years. They're not doing this all the time. This is their chance to, like, flex their muscle and be, like, a real good negotiator. And they got – sometimes people just want to feel like they got something. So we want to flush it out to make sure that they're not going to, you know, flex so much muscle that the seller is going to tell them the pound stand. You want to just kind of get to the bottom of it. So – and – you want to the, the what's the saying you want to under promise and over deliver so you don't want to say to somebody oh we'll get the seller to do all these repairs don't ever say something like that unless you're a thousand percent sure and i don't know how you could be a thousand percent sure we want to make sure that we are setting the expectations of our clients correctly so when you're going through all of this you want you don't want to say the seller will make all these repairs you want to say it's negotiable. And the seller could say no just as easily as they could say yes. And depending on the circumstances, some of the items may be easier to get taken care of compared to other items. So in my conversation with the buyer, I'm saying I'm going to ask them those questions. And I'm going to flush out what are the most important things. And then they're going to tell me what the most important things are. And then we're going to, like, have a discussion, and I'm going to say, okay, are you sure that's everything that, you know, we have, we've covered everything and you're comfortable moving forward? And I'm going to get that buyer to commit to me. I'm going to say to that buyer, just like I said to the, the buyer's agent on this deal, I said to the buyer's agent, Paul, did you read the inspection report? Yes. Did your, did your buyer read the report? Yes. Okay. We Are we in agreement that as long as there's nothing new found on the new inspection compared to this inspection, that your buyer's moving forward? Yes, we are. Okay, great. So you want to say to your buyer, if the seller fixes the heater and they do this electrical items, you're 100% cool with moving forward? Yes. Okay, great. Now I'm going to disconnect from them, and I'm going to prepare a reply to home inspection. You guys know what that is, right? I know we're using, um, everybody's using dot loop, except me right now. But I'm going, I'm just, uh, so what I would do is I would go into my forms, into my, and you could do this in dot loop, if I could find it. There it is. Okay, so now I go into, I find a reply to home inspection. This is the form that you want to use. Hold on, let me turn off this phone. Okay, so when you're, you don't want to use an addendum. Here's what some other agents do too that's not good see this addendum so they may use this form and they may start writing a lot of stuff in here here's here's a great example seller agrees to make all repairs in the inspection report Okay, see this, what I just wrote there? Do not ever do that. That is a terrible way to negotiate a home inspection. And that's doing a disservice to the buyer. It's making our industry look bad. And you should never do something like this. 
because it's inappropriate and it's not really it's not really explaining each repair so that somebody could understand it and actually do it. And you're leaving this all these repairs up to the interpretation of the seller. All right? And it's the wrong form anyway. See this? No good. This is used for you know weird stuff. Like here here's an example. If you want the seller to leave the patio furniture, that's what you would use an addendum for. And you won't want to show it to the bank or you won't want to make it part of the deal because then the bank might try to apply some value to the furniture or whatever. This would be a private addendum to the agreement between the seller and the buyer. Or there's a number of other things you could use. Anyway, I would not use this form. And again, if you have a question on which form to use or what to do, all you got to do is call me and talk to me about it, and I would help you. So this home inspection part, we're going to use the reply to home inspections, and we're going to check off what we did, home inspection, if we did wood, radon, whatever else we did, and then we're going to write in here, look, so, okay, so one thing that agents do, I see, is they negotiate the, they negotiate the reply to home inspections using a seller assist, right? So let's just say that the, the buyer and the seller are working it out and the buyer and seller agree that the seller will contribute $2,000 to satisfy the repairs. And the buyer is okay with that. Now you got the buyer agent who does this. Seller assist changed to $2,000. <clears throat> Again, no good. Don't ever do that because what's going to happen is is the, the buyer has a lender that's giving them a loan and you need to tell the lender that the buyer is getting $2,000 of seller assist. And the lender is going to want to see the addendum to the agreement of sale that says what the seller assist is. Then you're going to send them this item that says reply to home inspections and that has the seller assist on here. And here's what's going to happen. When you send this to the lender, the lender is going to say, oh, you did a home inspection? We're going to want to see that report. And then it's going to open up a whole can of worms. And the lender is going to start looking at a home inspection report. And then they might say, wait a second, there's 16 items on here. We want these items. So don't ever open that can of worms. It's not worth it. If you were going to do something like that, right, what you would do is you would use something called a change in terms addendum. All right? And then... You would go, seller assist is changed to $2,000. Buyer and seller sign it. Now, when you send this to the lender, all it is is a change in terms addendum. doesn't say anything about a home inspection. doesn't say anything about repairs. Nothing like that. And what I would do is go back to, so I would give them two forms, the change in terms addendum and on the reply to home inspection, I would put this, seller agrees to provide credit to buyer in the amount of $2,000 for repairs. Now we get the seller and the buyer to sign that, and now we get them to sign the change in terms addendum. The change in terms addendum is the one that we're sending to the bank. The reply to the home inspection is the form that we're using to satisfy our, our obligations as far as the agreement of sale goes. Okay, so the, I hope you all follow that. And 
we're going to try. Scott will unmute the. If you have a question, you guys can just chat. Use the chat box at the bottom here, and or and Scott might be able to open up for some questions if you have any questions. Um, and this isn't really what I wanted to show you anyway. What we're going to do is we're going to negotiate this report, and I want to show you how to do it. But I also want to give you an example. So here is my email. Okay. Here is that form, the reply to home inspection form, right? And I want you to see this. So I did a transaction where I was the listing agent of 852 Falkrod Street, right? And the agent that represented the buyer gave me this. Look, addendum to the agreement of sale. So they didn't use the form that they were supposed to use. And look at what they did. Look at, look at this. Like, it says installed, GFCI in kitchen, bathrooms, basement, handrail for stairways to basement, smoke detectors outside sleeping areas, installed jumper wire across the water meter. It looks like a run-on sentence that she's giving to me. And it was very difficult to get the sellers to understand this. Notice what I did. I made a list of each item. I, try, I talked to the agent. I made a list of each item. And then, you know, I went and met with the sellers and discussed each item with them, but it was very difficult. Take a look at this reply to home inspection and compare it to this. Now, again, this agent, I don't like what she did here. Look at this. This one was January of 2013. This one was February. So this happened, this happened within days of each other. I got two, I was the listing agent on both properties, and I got two um, replies. So they both used the wrong form, which is terrible. They shouldn't, you should never do that. You should always use, use the right form. It's just, it's just not, it's not a good way to handle the, the negotiation. But one person gave me one long run-on sentence that was very hard to comprehend, and the other person made a nice list. They numbered each item, and they told me exactly what they wanted to do. Look at this. Repair first floor bathroom sink drain leak. Correct the electrical issue over fuse condition in the panel. Correct the top of the chimney flue liner as recommended by a licensed chimney sweep. Replace the chimney rain cap. Have a license. So look at what they did that was very, very clear. They explained what they wanted to do. They numbered each item. And what I did is I showed this to the seller and said, look, these are the items that they're requesting to move forward with the transaction. It doesn't seem that complicated to me. Let me know what you think. They looked at all 12 items and they said, we'll do, every, we'll do everything. And they took care of every one of those items. So you could see the one scenario to another. And now you're going to see another one because I'm going to negotiate. We're going to go back to that deal. We're going to go back to this and my issues, and we're going to make our own repair list. So what am I going to start with? Number one, I love making a list, and I love being able to do this so that, one, I'm clear and concise, and if there's only five items, I got five items. It doesn't seem like there's – look at this. This seems like uh, – here, this makes me crazy looking at this. When I'm trying to read this, it made me feel, you know, it, it got. I became anxious. Seriously, if I was a seller and I look at this, this would give me anxiety. If I look at this, I go, okay, well, there's. I start out by saying to myself, there's 12 things to do. Here, it looks like there's a million things to do. I don't even know what this is. It's all jumbled up, and it's all like one run-on sentence. So now I look, focus in on this. There's 12 things to do. And I'm able to concentrate and look, like say, okay, let's take one thing at a time. Here, I don't, there isn't one thing at a time. It's like 60 things at a time. So you could follow that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by saying, okay, when I was talking to my buyer, remember we were having that conversation on the phone, the buyer said, 
I, no way. When I said, if they tell us they're not going to do any repairs, do you still want to buy the property? They say, no way. Okay, why not? The heater is a big, the heater is not even working. So have a seller agrees to provide buyer with a plumbing, plumbing certification for the heating system. There might be other ways to word that, or you can, whatever, but plumbing certification, whatever. You, you get the point. You could, you, can, you could make this a little, you could say, buy a licensed plumber, whatever, insured. You can whatever. But you could see here, too, property, workmanlike manner with permits if required, following credits, you know, so you... We're saying to them we want it done correctly. Okay, what was the second thing that they said, or that I said when I was pretending to be them? The electrical work. So here, look at this first item. Seller agrees to correct electrical, correct, Double taps in the electrical box. Number three, seller agrees to install. What is that thing called? Grommet? He called it Grom Grommet. Grommet in panel. Box. I'm going to change this to panel box, so. so they know we're talking about the same thing. You almost want to make this out so that somebody in the second grade could, maybe the fourth grade, could like kind of read this and figure this out. Um, what was our next thing? Seller agrees to correct. You got to be like a wordsmith. Seller agreed to collect multiple ground and neutral wiring, and so again, seller agrees to correct multiple terminations in the electrical in the panel box. What's the next thing? And I'm doing this a little quick, so I might spend a little bit more time on that. Okay, the outside light. I got you. You could do that. So what Scott just wrote is, is that you could refer to the, in the report, you can refer to the section that you're talking about. So I could write here, page five. Page five. You, know, you could do that if you want. Um, Okay, outside down, seller agrees to repair exterior outlet and light fan in front bedroom. Five, seller agrees to repair exterior outlet and fan light front bedroom. Six, um, Seller agrees to paint skylight. Seller agrees to make skylight operational. Seven, seller agrees to paint skylight. Notice I'm giving them a list. I'm telling them exactly what I want done. 
I don't want to put this all put two things in one sentence. Um, Sauer agrees to have roof silver coated and and provide buyer with a two year warranty. Number nine. Um, this would be a sticking point. Seller agrees to make all windows operational by making sure that each window can open, close, and lock. So there you go. So I would think to myself, maybe you might add a couple things or not. You know, you might say, you know, some of this was too much. But at the end of the day, I'm going to send this to the buyer, and I'm going to say, please review this, sign it, and send it back to me. And then hopefully the buyer is able to review it, they're happy with it, or they might say, could you add this or add that, or don't worry about this or don't worry about that. And then at the end of it, we submit it to the seller and we or to the, seller, to the listing agent. And we say, look, here's the items in the report. There's nine things. The, the, the buyer really needs to get these items taken care of. And then at some point, there may be further negotiation to like determine what if the buyer doesn't want to do the what if the seller doesn't want to do these items and they want to get a give a credit frankly I would rather have a credit for these items because sometimes the seller might do the repairs and they might be sloppy or not done correctly all the electrical items the electrical items might be a few hundred bucks total you know to make fix the skylight you know might be a couple hundred bucks the roof might be a few hundred bucks you got to start like thinking like that. How much is all this going to cost? And try to maybe talk to a roofer, talk to the home inspector, talk to me, get a sense of what it's going to be, and then maybe you could have a more in-depth conversation with the buyer. The main issue with this house and in this report is that the heating system wasn't working. So in that situation, we wouldn't want to move forward with the purchase unless we knew that that heating system was working in advance. So that is something that I would try to make sure that the seller did. And then I would add one thing on the here. Seller agrees to have all repairs completed on or before August 10, 2015. Why do we want to do that? Because we don't want to have a repair list for a home inspection and go check everything out 9 o'clock on the day of settlement. That is a terrible idea, and I see it happen all the time. The agent says, oh, yeah, we negotiated the repairs. Then they go to the house. Settlement's at 11. They go to the house at 9, and none of the repairs are done. And, they, and then they call the agent and say none of the repairs are done. And then what? you got a big, giant problem. It's no good. So what you want to do is a week prior to settlement, you want to make sure that these repairs are done. And you want to walk through as an agent, go through the house and say, before, you know, I want to make sure that we have time. Or you want the buyer to go through to make sure they have time to go look at everything and or reinspect it or make sure that the repairs are done. Maybe that plumbing certification, that's a piece of paper they give to us. Okay, that's acceptable. Maybe the electrical work, that's acceptable. What about the windows? I would want to go in and open those windows up, make sure they stay open, make sure they lock, you know, that kind of stuff. Or even with the skylight, let's go make sure that that thing opens. So some of these items you would want to check out prior to settlement, or you would want to have the reports or invoices or certifications back from the uh, listing agent, from the contractors they use. And it's always possible to leave the door open to negotiate a credit for these items. All right, so I wanted to just give you guys a, a, a visual of seeing the two, the, you know, the different forms, different ways to use it, 
and the different things that you're going to be looking at on these deals. Does anybody have any questions? Or Scott, you want to open up the... Um... Yes, I will. Okay, others can only talk. Should I do that? All right, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, it's going pretty good. No. Yeah, I would just tell the people that I, if you have a ticket coming, come and get it. Here's Somebody get the thing. Need, need a bus, here's the other nearest places or wherever. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back yeah. to... Clement, August 4th, right? How did I do that audio, Scott? Well, I want to make it so not... Audio. Yeah, I want to go. Nobody can talk. I want to go back to nobody can talk. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. We're going to take a couple more minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Use the chat box to ask a question or tell me that you have a question, and we can make you audible for the group to hear. Anyone has any questions? Also, this uh, training was recorded, so it'll be available on our website. And you can see the chat box in the bottom there of the join me, um, the join me box. If nobody has any questions, then we're going to end the training. And then you guys can always call me anytime if you do have any questions. And uh, you can always review the recording too. All right, thanks for thanks for coming to our training. I'm going to close out of it. Everybody have a good night.